I'm Hillary McClure, Multimedia Director at Cybercrime Magazine. Welcome to Let's Talk SOC, a Cybercrime Magazine podcast series brought to you by SecureWorks, a leader in cybersecurity, empowering security and IT teams worldwide to accelerate effective security operations. Joining me today is Rafe Pilling, Senior Security Researcher at SecureWorks. Welcome, Rafe. So great to have you with us today. Thank you, Hillary. It's great to be here. So to start off, Rafe, want to tell us a little bit about your role at SecureWorks? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I am a, um, a senior security researcher in the counter threat unit cyber intelligence cell. I uh, don't get business cards because it's, it's too long to put on a business <laughs> card. Um, so what does that mean? Um, it means I'm focused on, on threat research. Um, I'm the thematic lead for Iran. So that is my uh, specialist area of research. Um, uh, I, I focus on sort of keeping in, on top of generally speaking threats from Iran, um, but it can also span whatever else happens to be uh, going on at the time. So uh, our team supports the um, inter response team in terms of providing them with threat intelligence uh, on investigations and incidents that they're working. We work with the countermeasures team in the CTU in order to sort of feed them the latest intelligence and insights on tradecraft we're seeing um, either maybe from incident response engagements or from our own research or from client telemetry or, or things we're, um, we're getting from, from other sort of partners outside the, the organization. Um, so, yeah, lots of, lots of moving parts, very, very sort of threat focused, uh, usually something interesting uh, across my desk every day, um, sort of fast paced and uh, exciting role with a, with a great team. Excellent. Um, certainly understand how you couldn't fit all that on a business card. <laughs> um, so Rafe, we're, we've heard a lot and are continue to, continuing to hear a lot about supply chain attacks um, over the past you know, year, year and a half. And in the future, it's my question to you is what you know, is what we're reading all true? Has there in fact been an increase in supply chain attacks and disruptions or not so much? I think... For a number of reasons, supply chain attacks have, have come to the fore. Uh, so back maybe 10, 15 years ago when I was doing uh, sort of more sort of information assurance related consulting work, a supply chain attack uh, was, was one of those things you sort of include in your, your risk model but was not seen as a, as a major concern. You um, Later on, sort of vendor risk management became um, more of a thing, uh, but still it was kind of seen as a um, as a thing you did for sort of audit and compliance purposes, but but not a sort of a, a strong sort of tactical security consideration. Whereas these days we realize how how complex supply chains can be. I mean, organizations have their their sort of explicit contractual relationships with with other companies they work with, maybe for for IT services. Um, there's also the underlying relationships that those organizations have with each other with others. We have people sort of relying on, on cloud services. We have people whose uh, software supply chain integrates software from, from other third parties, which may then integrate with other third parties. You're downloading software updates from, from sort of software suppliers that you, you trust, um, but they also represent a way of, of getting code into the organization. Uh, and, and all of these sort of vectors are things that threat actors, whether they're sort of criminal or nation state, uh, they look at as a, as a path into uh, organizations. And we've seen that both on the, the sort of highly targeted um, sort of niche uh, attack type scale uh, and also sort of the, the very big and, and grand sort of, you know, tens of thousands of organizations being impacted type scale in the, in the last, um, in the last few years, certainly. Excellent. And so based on your experience, who's responsible for securing the supply chain? For example, is it, is it IT? Is it, security teams or is it the, the vendor themselves? I think that's something that can get kind of lost in translation here when we talk about supply chain attacks. Absolutely. And uh, there's the, the phrase that cyber defense is a team sport. And I think we, we increasingly need to recognize that, that sort of our, our third parties and our supply chains and the supply chains that we are part of uh, are part of that sort of extended team. So certainly having the uh, a clear definition of roles and responsibilities is is critical. I think that's where things can easily fall down the cracks, where people aren't sure who's responsible for a security boundary or where that security boundary is, uh, or the different layers of um, of a you know particular system or software stack. Who's responsible for patching the operating system? Who's managing the applications? Who's managing the data? Uh, who's managing 
the the system that's used as a, a bastion host to get into into your network. Um, having very clear definitions of those those boundaries and those responsibilities, I think, is is the first step. Um, and then then there is a whole uh, sort of set of practices and standards around vendor risk management and having controls and the right to audit. But it is very much an area where you you make your own luck. So being able to monitor within your organization and being able to monitor those boundaries um, is is a big part of that and having that visibility to spot when something uh, goes wrong. And certainly the, the partnership between IT and security within an organization, again, is critical, um, making sure that security is aware when third parties or, or um, external service providers are being brought in or, or introduced to the environment in some way or managing managing the organization's data or, or the data the organization holds on behalf of customers, um, all sort of absolutely critical to, to sort of work together, um, make sure everyone's aware of what's going on and the right sort of standards um, and controls are put in place. Fantastic. And so I guess to expand on, on this further, Rafe, what, how do we proceed in, I mean, I think you just touched upon it a little bit, but again, as I just said, to expand further, how do we proceed in mitigating supply chain attacks? What, what more can we be doing? It's, it's definitely, um, you know, definitely can be a, a tricky problem. And it's, it's a problem that's already compounded by the fact that all rate organizations receive so many sort of direct attacks through email, through people sort of actively going after their, uh, their perimeter infrastructure, scanning for sort of weaknesses and, and vulnerabilities and exploits on the perimeter. And the supply chain represents yet another route into the organization that a, a threat actor may either deliberately or, or opportunistically take. I mean, going, going back to kind of the earlier point, um, roles, responsibilities, being clear what access vendors have or what reliance you have on, on a, a vendor within your environment is, is critical. A degree of sort of segmentation, um, I think, is also really useful. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't always work in, in every case. Um, often a, a provider needs access to, to your environment to do whatever it is they do, but making sure that access is constrained as possible and, and monitored is key. And then, yeah, when we're talking about sort of wider service providers, I think understanding what the attack surface there is is, is really important. So, so threat modeling feels like it's sort of a dying art, um, but I think it's another one of those things that needs to sort of come back so organizations can be very aware of, um, of who might have access to their data, who do they rely on for, for their access to their data, and how that access might be abused by you know, an insider at a third party or, um, or a threat actor that is, is coming in by that third party. But it's definitely a, a complex problem. Great. That makes sense. And um, my final question for you, Rafe, to kind of bring everything together is, you, you know, what, what best practices or, or learnings can we take away and further implement based on the past supply chain attacks that we've witnessed? Good, good question. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think we've seen sort of a range. So recently I worked on an engagement um, uh, involving North Korean threat actors, although that's almost immaterial uh, mm. in this case. And, and they, they access the, the client's environment um, via a, a sort of an IT service provider. They, they'd compromised the perimeter of that service provider. Um, they found the, the systems that were being used for, by that service provider to, to work with their clients. And they, they use that as a gateway into the, the victim's environment. And initially, there was some confusion about, you know, what the system was that had been used as a gateway. It sort of, it almost felt like it was a server that had been left sort of in the, in the corner of some data center somewhere, and, and no one was really paying much attention to it. And it was kind of the ideal opportunity for um, the threat actors to sort of walk through that gateway into uh, another environment. So just that kind of basic uh, awareness of, of who has access to your environment, what those access mechanisms are, and, and who is, again, responsible for for that is is key, and that's kind of the I think one of the most basic sort of scenarios for for sort of supply chain attacks. And then it gets more complicated. We've seen in in 2020, for example, there was the the Solar Winds attack where a, a threat actor compromised that organization and used uh, their their own product as a way to sort of push out access to hundreds, um, in some cases thousands of organizations around the world, even though they only wanted to target a, a small fraction of those organizations. Um, and we've seen that previously with things like CC Cleaner and, and NetSarang. Um, and even with the uh, the NotPetya wiper attack a number of years ago, there was the, the company Medoc 
um, again, their sort of update mechanism was abused to to push malicious code to lots of, of their clients around the world. So these software update channels do provide a, a route into these organizations uh, and, and can be quite complex. Um, and so in addition to what I just said there about the complexity, I think some of the ways we can look at addressing that are uh, comprehensive visibility across the, the organization. And so we, uh, at SecureWorks, for example, we have the, the Tejas XDR platform. Uh, and a big benefit of that is, is drawing together the visibility from the endpoints, from the network, from cloud-based log sources. Um, in that case, I worked previously, uh, the, the victim organization had deployed uh, an EDR and uh, endpoint detection response tool. And so they very quickly spotted that intrusion into their environment. And, and having that sort of visibility is, I think, crucial, particularly if you are struggling to sort of uh, secure and and discover all of the ways uh, suppliers and third parties have access to your environment. People talk about zero trust and identity and access management. I think those are very important, uh, certainly not topics we can sort of delve into in detail here, but certainly things to sort of think about the zero trust model in, in particular, I think is useful in these scenarios. And the last one is, is instant response. I find that knowing who you should talk to uh, at a supplier when a crisis happens is it's critical to sort of have that outlined in advance, have your, your communications uh, mapped out. Effective communication in a crisis is, is a huge contributor to a successful outcome versus not knowing who to contact, not ha- knowing how to sort of um, get people quickly moving on on sort of responding to the, the incident. Um, if you're working with a third party incident response provider, making sure that you have them um, on speed dial and, and that they're all sort of plugged in and you can sort of tabletop that stuff out in advance. Uh, and that's very um, a very useful way to make sure you're prepared. Uh, even when you know the the unusual, the unexpected occurs. Fantastic. Well, Rafe, this has been a wonderful conversation, and I think it's been a really important one, especially with what's going on with supply chains. And I just really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show and uh, speak with us today. Such a such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's um, I think it's a, a fascinating topic. I think with the ransomware attacks that we've seen, um, it, it's it's something that organizations need to think of. Um, and, and even just some of the the knock on impact that those ransomware attacks have had when it's disrupted the supply chains of 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 their customers, we saw with sort of the Colonial Pipeline incident, mm. for example, uh, can cause significant sort of disruptions. So uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a focus area I think for a lot of enterprises. Absolutely, completely agree. Well, Rafe, thank you again. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much. 